welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to the Be Young Ministry YouTube page um, to another podcast, to another blog out of Galatians. I trust you're doing well today. Today we're in Galatians chapter 4 verses 17 through 20 which reads, Those people are zealous to win you over but for no good. What they want is to alienate you from us so that you may have zeal for them. It is fine to be zealous, providing, provided the purpose is good, and to be so always, not just when I am with you. My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you, how I wish I could be with you now and change my tone because I am perplexed about you. Galatians chapter 4 verses 17 through 20. Those people in verse 17 are the false teachers who had come from Jerusalem. The motivation in the hearts of those people is themselves and getting the Galatians to think that they are most spiritual We all have a tendency to do that, don't we? We all want people to think better of us than they truly should. And in reality, we're all in the same boat. God knows there's more sin in us than we do ourselves. So much of our spirituality is simply trying to hide our sinfulness, which is crazy. In verse 19, the Apostle Paul describes spirituality Uh, which is the forming of Christ in the life of the believer. That's what spirituality really is. So we don't get credit for it, really. And the result of this spirituality, among other things, is freedom from the idea that we have to earn God's favor. The Greek word Paul uses for formed is morphothe, or morphothe, pardon me. You'll recognize that root word, We get our word morphosis from it. And this word points us to the slow process whereby a baby is developed in the womb of its mother. This is not an overnight event. No, it's a process that produces a heart for God in the heart of the believer. And God uses all kinds of ingredients to bring about uh, spirituality in the believer. It's really coming to an end of ourselves and fully embracing Him, or whatever degree that is. I doubt we ever fully embrace Him this side of heaven. The message of these false teachers was diametrically opposed to the teachings of the Apostle Paul. In verse 17, we read, those people are zealous to win you over, but for no good. What they want is to alienate you from us so that may, they may have zeal, so that you may have zeal for them. The motive of these teachers was human praise. And to get this type of attention, they tell the Galatians they will miss God's blessing if they don't accept their teachings about good works. So the Galatians were circumcised in hopes of earning God's favor. Their behavior was rooted in pride since they thought our acceptability acceptability before God depends on our good behavior. This is outward compulsion and is always the pattern of the evil one. God always works in the opposite. He always works from the inside out. He captures our hearts through a variety of means. Sad thing is, is that most of us evaluate God incorrectly through the wrong things rather than his word. We depend on primarily our dads. I think that was his design in the beginning. But of course, the fall distorted that. And God knows it takes a lot to win our hearts. But boy, once he's won our hearts, like the Apostle Paul, The sky's the limits, isn't it? 
In contrast, in verse 19, Paul's message was full of desire to bring glory to the Lord Jesus. You see, when Christ shapes and forms our hearts after his, the result will be the bowing of our lives to him. This is the product of love. Faith is the assurance that what God will make of us, and as Christ is formed in us, we naturally want to reciprocate the favor. Faith, in addition, is the confidence that the work of Christ in our lives is far more wonderful than all the praise we could get from people. Someone once said the problem with self-made men is that they tend to worship their creator. And if we're self-made, <laughs> we're our own creators and we worship ourselves. And we do this in a variety of ways. I remember when I was a kid, I used to get on my knees in the morning praying to God, hoping that I would do well in school. And it was a ritual. And uh, I was trying to perform for his favor, and yet uh, I had formed an image of him out of myself. The lesson for us is to surrender our lives to the sovereign one who has our best interest at heart. And when we do this, we will worship our Creator. Note that in verse 20, Paul was perplexed by the behavior of the Galatians. He was perplexed because he had experienced the grace that alters the heart to the point that we place ourselves on the altar of love. It is impossible to appreciate God's grace without understanding God's law. His law is like a mirror. When we look into the mirror, we see our imperfection, and it crushes us. And this is where grace has its great opportunity, and it comes in. And at this point, is it's, it's refreshing. Because if the law of God has done its work, we will be looking for relief. Once we experience the relief of God's grace, how can we turn away from him? And this is what perplexed Paul. In Hebrews 13, 9, we read, It is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace. I'd say the, what precedes that is almost as important. It is good for the heart to be crushed by the law or our, our understanding that we are incapable of measuring up. The healthiest people in the world are those who are aware of their inadequacies and they're able to say, I'd say willing to say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. My friend, I trust this blog, this podcast is helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. Should I be in a position to be of help to you, send me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day. 